Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have some frozen mullet with me and I'm gonna set them out on a couple of jug lines and see if we can catch some catfish. For those unfamiliar with jugging, all you're basically doing is you have some type of object that floats with a line attached to it and generally a circle hook. And what you do is you set multiple lines out, multiple jugs, and that gives you a lot of opportunities to catch a lot of fish quite quickly. Now for my setup, I generally use a piece of PVC pipe, a pool noodle, and then I have a piece of rebar inside the PVC. And how that works is, as it's up here on the front, it's gonna keep it flat, but when a fish hits it, you can hear that rebar go to the bottom, the jug's gonna stand up and it tattletales on the fish, basically. Also, there's some theories out there that it actually uh, scares the fish, which makes them dive quicker and sets that circle hook a little bit better. Not really sure if that's the case or not, but that's my general setup. As far as hooks go, I have a five aught uh, circle hook on this particular one. However, I do use some eight aughts, but I've had a lot of luck on the five odd, especially when you're dealing with medium to smaller size fish. But I wanna get some mullet out, we'll cut it up, and we'll put some of these jugs in the water. So when it comes to really any bait for catfish, when you're jugging, you don't need big pieces of bait. This is a bit bigger than a quarter size uh, piece of mullet that I just cut off. And all I'm gonna do on this five odd hook is I'm gonna hook it right through the top, uh, through these scales and through the skin that might help it stay on a little bit better. Mullet's pretty soft when it gets warm, it gets pretty mushy, so we'll have to see how it holds on the bait, but this is experimenting. But there we go, I have plenty of the bait holder left. I get these scales off of my circle hook, and now it's ready to go in the water, that barb is free. We'll see if we can get a fish on it. So far, the best way I've found to use this mullet is by going right through the edge of the meat, going into the tissue and the scales, and then right there on the corner while leaving the bar point exposed. So that's how I think I'm gonna do it for the time being. We'll have to see how well this stays on the hook, of course. I don't have great hopes, but uh, maybe we'll get lucky. We'll just have to find out. Now, the one good thing about this is that it is a pretty smelly bait. It's got a lot of oil in it, so they ought to attract fish. And there is a little current back here, so that scent's gonna slowly push down this way. That's why I started a little bit farther back than what I normally would, um, given the current today. So I'm gonna set out probably four or five more back here, and then I'm gonna run to a different spot that's a bit deeper and see if we have the same results or better in deeper water. All right, final jug for this set. I just used the rest of the head so I wouldn't have to carry this bait or throw it back in the ice chest and get everything dirty. Um, it seems like one mold's lasting about nine jugs or so, nine to 10, depending how small you cut it. But we got these set. I'm a little concerned on how well these are gonna stay on the hook. I'm gonna check my first ones. Hopefully that bait is still on. That would be a good indication because it's been watered the longest. But since they're in, I'm gonna go to another spot that's a little bit deeper probably 12 to 14 feet. It's a little bit deeper now off of main lake and we'll see if we have better results than we do in this little bit shallower water. Well, I just went and checked that mullet, the first one I set out and it's already gone. And I don't think it was a fish quite that quickly. So I'm afraid that this bait is kind of doing what I was worried about and that's falling off the hook rather quickly. But I want to set another piece on here, uh, give it another shot, leave these back here, go set the other ones out and hopefully this bait will stay on the hook long enough to get a fish. But if not, learning a lot here, that tells me mullet may not be the best option, but we'll get to that summation a little bit later. That's not good. For some reason, the engine is getting no power at all. I'm gonna try to take my trolling motor battery out of the front, hook it up to the engine. I'm hoping that battery's just gone bad, which kind of surprises me. It seems like it's been holding voltage just fine. I used it a couple weeks ago and it was perfectly fine, but we'll give that a shot. Hopefully that'll fix the, fix the issue.
Well, that's gonna have to work for now. Fingers crossed. Yep. Dead battery. I even checked this battery before I left yesterday and it seemed just fine. I didn't check the voltage, but engine cranked over just fine. And nothing was turned on. The only thing it's really connected to is the sonar, which wasn't plugged in. And the engine itself. One of those things that happens, but gives me a good excuse to maybe go to a lithium battery in the back. First jug and we are at nearly 15 feet. Like I said, it's just a little pocket for about a hundred yard stretch. Then it goes back up to about nine, 10 feet on both sides. So maybe this deep water is going to hold the fish because the water temp right now at the surface is about 83 degrees. So we'll be looking for that cooler water, probably something a bit more stable. So we'll give this a shot, throw nine jugs out, I believe. I believe I have nine left. Let's see if we can get on them. Last jug on the second set. I have a little bit of tape around this jug and that's just going to let me know that this is indeed the last one. Well, Given the battery situation and looking around, it's been about an hour and a half now, two hours. So I'm gonna go ahead, go to my first set, check around, see if it, they need to be rebated, if there's baits on the hooks, or if we have some catfish on. Well, I'm starting at the back of this line and I'm just gotten to my first jug and it's drifted at least 400 yards, which does surprise me, but it is up. So we'll check it real quick. So far, no movements from it. I don't have the trolling motor, so this makes it a little bit more difficult, especially in the shallower water. And nothing on that one. But I will say at least some of the bait is still on the hook. That does surprise me. I figured all the bait was going to be falling off these hooks, so that's nice to see at least. Now the other good sign is that jugs are up on both the left and right side of the river. Usually the wind will only push them to one side, so that may mean that they actually did have strikes on them and that the bait is working. Even so, got one on the opposite side I'm about to check, and then got a couple on this other side I'll check, but I'm going to get the paddle out, no trolling motor, just have to do a little bit more old school. Well. That must have been an alligator because it ripped that line right off or a very, very large catfish over here. But hey, anytime I see a line ripped such as that, it means there's something pretty good in the area. Oh well, that's another one I gotta fix. Well, the good news is that line I had to rebait at the beginning, that bait is still on there. Now, it doesn't look great, but the bait is staying on the hook a little bit better than I expected. I was really worried about the mullet being too soft, immediately falling off, but fortunately, it might be a viable option. Now, if we just can catch a fish on it, we'll be in good shape. Maybe an alligator, just like last time. Well, I'm definitely missing at least one jug, possibly two. So I want to go looking around this basin for them. I wonder if this is more open water than what I normally put jugs out in. They may have taken them farther down river or through the creek. So I want to go do a little bit of searching, and hopefully be able to find them. Well, here's one jug and it looks like it's right in the middle of some lily pads and something is pulling on it by the looks of things. Makes me a little nervous it's in lily pads, but uh, hopefully it's not an alligator. Hopefully it's just a catfish that got caught up in here. We'll see. All right, we'll definitely have something. And it's a catfish. <laughs> And it's a good, that's a really good catfish. One second, I'll get y'all set up a little bit better. And that is the first one of the day. <laughs> that's a good size one. Definitely a 10 or so pounder probably. Well, maybe I was onto something with going to a bit deeper water. It certainly looks that way. He's definitely one I'm going to fillet. He's the perfect size, nice big fillets off of him, but not so big that he's going to have a lot of mercury, especially in these waterways. I'll get him off the hook, throw him in the ice chest. I will take that size any day of the week, have no doubt. Well, he's pretty calm and relaxed. Throw him in the ice chest, check this other line, because I saw another one hundreds of yards down the river.
Yeah, it's just moving along. It's not very happy I'm here, that's for certain. I don't see any bubbles, so it doesn't seem like an alligator quite yet. It seems more like catfish behavior, maybe gar. All right, here we go. Finally caught up to him. It's gone slack up. Nope, there's something. Get this band off from the motor, that'll help. Ooh, now that's something I actually don't see here quite often. That's kind of cool. We have a gaff top sailfish by the looks of it. Let's take a look here. Yep, a gaff top sailfish. How about that? That is something I don't see up here very often. I'm pretty certain that's a gaff top. It's got to be. Yeah, that's a gaff top. This might be my first gaff top I've ever caught up here. Now, gaff top can be good to eat. Personally, I'm not gonna take them home um, just because I'm not very familiar with gaff top. And considering this is the first one I ever caught back here, I'll put them back in for good luck. But still a pretty neat catch, something I do not see every day. Throw them back in the water and hopefully catch a few more blues. Just to give y'all a better look, gaff tops have those very distinguishable, very large fins on their dorsal and their apex fins, and they tend to have very long whiskers as well. Kind of a neat fish. Look like a blue cat, but there is a little bit difference. You can find these in both fresh and salt water. A little surprised to see them this far up here. Uh, I guess the salinity is, a little, salinity is a little bit higher than what I was expecting, but regardless, pretty neat catch. The wind has shifted north at this point, so it's driving all the jugs I put out into the bank. It's getting a little bit later in the evening and I'm pretty sunburned, so I'm probably gonna, just gonna go ahead and check them one last time, pick them up, get them out of here. Also, if it being the first day of duck season, I don't wanna deal with people accidentally shooting too close to the water and all the fun stuff that comes with that either. I'm on one of, if not the last jug, and it's up surprisingly, so, We'll see if there's anything on. It's not moving around a whole lot right now from what I can tell, but who knows? We'll pick it up, pick it up and check it out. It's got a little weight. It's very little. <laughs> oh, we're not going to count that one. That's about as small as the ones we had in the last trip, unfortunately. Mm, looks like a very, very young blue cat. I don't think that's a channel. Um, for obvious reasons, we're not gonna be keeping him. So I'll go ahead and get him off the hook and throw him back. Let him grow up to be a little bit bigger and try to catch him again then. Having used both mullet and shad, I personally like shad more. The thin profile makes it easier to put on a hook. You're able to go through the outside, the meat, and then back through the outside. And the meat's a little bit tougher than mullet. Mullet's a really, really soft fish, so it doesn't stay on all that well. But it was effective, and I did get bites on it and catch a couple of fish. Now, part of that is me. I probably should have set that first set of jugs in deeper water. But trial and error, just kind of had to sit around figured out a little bit and now I know for next year about this time of year probably need to go deeper guys I do hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did please make sure to share like subscribe for more and thanks for watching